I'm from New Zealand. It's a beautiful little country far away at the bottom of the world. Many things make New Zealanders proud in a modest and mumbling sort of way. We are particularly proud of our young Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who has just had her first baby. Her partner Clark has taken on being the primary caregiver and left the new mum to get back to running the government. It has all been very matter of fact, as if this is now the new normal. Of course it's not normal, anywhere, not yet. Jacinda Ardern is only the second Prime Minister in the world to have had a baby while on the job. She's also our third woman Prime Minister, and this too is a rarity. So far, there are only three countries in the world which have elected three women as their leaders. Why has it been so hard for women to become leaders in government and in business? Why do some changes happen quickly and others seem to take forever? Questions like these arise over and over for leaders working in complexity. They are at the core of complexity concepts like self-organisation and basins of attraction. In the case of women leaders, in most countries the whole system pushes back. It has always been a battle for women to get the vote. Most societies still see women as primarily mothers first and anything else comes later. Many men assume that leading in politics and business means being tough and winning at all costs. Men put women down in so many ways, and women usually find it much harder to access resources and funding. These and other forces work together to create what, in complexity jargon, is called a basin of attraction. Many things combine to create a pattern which keeps the system stable, in this example, keeping men in power. The metaphor is of a ball circulating in a basin. The basin is made up of the pieces that interact to hold things stable. You cannot predict the actual position of the ball at any point, but the rough pattern is consistent, shaped by the basin, emerging from the interactions of all the elements. There are many exceptional women leaders. However, at the moment, when they get to the top, it is often the exception that proves the rule. Generally, the old boys system self-organises to just stay the same. What can leaders pay attention to when you are trying to change things? Firstly, look closely at your existing system. How is it organising to stay the same? If you are trying to change things by pushing directly against how the system organises itself, then you are shoving stuff uphill with a rake. It may not be apparent in this cartoon, but I would be healthier if I lost 10 to 15 kilos. I know that. I know I drink too much, eat too much, and love cheeses and burgers and fries and ice cream. Mmm. And I know that just saying stop it does not work. In order to make the change, I have to see the ways I am pulled towards these delights and can't stop myself. I need to understand the system of me. How can I organise my desires to drive me toward healthier eating and drinking? This is the second step. Are there drivers in the system that can support the change you want to make, or will you have to break things up? Can I eat less and eat healthily in my current lifestyle, or do I need to make much bigger changes? Thirdly, we may not be able to change things head on but we can look for bright spots where change is already occurring. Places where I'm already eating healthily, for example. We can also look to the edges for places to experiment. I might give up booze for a month. Successful changes are often bright spots at the edges of the system, like in a small country at the southern edge of the world, which, when nurtured, are able to prove their success on a larger stage. A fourth thing to consider is whether you are aiming for a full-scale transformation or do you want to adapt what you have to make it work better. Transforming the whole system involves replacing one approach with another in which people's needs will be met in quite different ways. Real success comes when the benefits of the new approach are so obvious that it becomes a new self-organising pattern. Not so long ago, most of us hailed taxis had cameras for taking photos, and rang up to book accommodation. 
Now we do all this with a smartphone, which has transformed our lives by creating new patterns because it goes with the flow of what people want and makes things easier. In other situations, you might just want reform rather than revolution. You might just seek to make the existing pattern more resilient. This is a choice leaders often face. Do we want to adapt the system or transform it? If you run the Beefy Bikers Burger Bar and choose to convert to being totally vegan, then that is likely to be a complete transformation, a different business entirely. Instead, an adaptive or reforming approach might be to add a line of salads and fresh fruits. Let's call them Harley Hogan Health Foods. It would aim to keep the business the same and retain existing clients, but also make it more resilient if aging bikers started revving up concerns about their mortality. This is the innovator's dilemma. Concentrate on adapting existing technologies to gain more value or replace them with something very different. It's also a challenge for women seeking greater power in politics or business. How much do they adapt themselves and their ways of working to be more like the male leaders in the existing system? Or how much do they work to build a different system with different ways of exercising power? Our small country in the far south is not perfect, but it is seeking ways for men and women to share much more of the business of governing and parenting. The hope is that new patterns will emerge and these will become self-organising. We will establish a new normal.